Hello, I'm Stephan Tolan with the Stedman Hawkins Clinic of the Carolinas, part of the Greenville Hospital System University Medical Center. I wanted to talk to you today about frozen shoulder, also known as adhesive capsulitis. A lot of times we don't know what causes this disorder. It's a very painful condition that affects um, the shoulder um, and it's associated commonly with loss of motion uh, so you feel like the motion in your shoulder is decreased or diminished and you have significant pain. It can be brought about by an injury. It's also sometimes related to other disorders such as diabetes or thyroid dysfunction. Um, but more often than not, we don't know what has caused the condition to occur. The condition usually starts out insidiously. Um, it's not all the time associated with an injury, but can happen with an injury. The shoulder becomes very painful. Um, that's in the early phase, and then the shoulder tightens up and you start losing motion. There's a, a whole variation on how involved this can be from just losing 10 or 15 percent of the motion or maybe the inability to turn the arm all the way out to the side or all the way behind the back to the point where the shoulder may be almost locked at the side. Um, this happens because the lining of the shoulder underneath the muscles here of the rotator cuff, the actual lining of the shoulder gets very thickened and it gets very reddened and very painful. As that gets thickened, it constrains or restricts the motion in the shoulder. It's almost like putting two marbles in a Ziploc bag and they can move freely in there. That's how the, the bones and the, and the articular surfaces move. But if you tighten the bag around the marbles, occasionally you'll, or you'll get to the point where you tighten it enough that they are unable to move. And that's what happens with frozen shoulder. The bones and the articular surfaces are normal. It's just the lining around them gets so tight that the shoulder is unable to move. And it's very painful when it stretches that lining. We treat this usually with anti-inflammatory medications. Um, we'll also use pain medications. Sometimes we'll write a prescription for steroids um, to be taken. Oftentimes we'll put an injection of a, of a cortisone or a steroid into the shoulder joint and that puts a, a higher dose of the medicine at the affected area and then would prescribe physical therapy or home stretching exercises to help stretch out the lining of the shoulder. This has been shown in studies to work in 85 to 90 percent of the time. It, it's not a, a very quick fix. Usually it takes two to three months to get all the way over this, but with the medicines, the injections, and with the therapy, 90 percent of people get better without surgical intervention. Some people um, who don't respond to these treatments after a, a period of two to three months, and they're still very painful and still have very um, noticeable loss of motion, loss of function in the shoulder, at that point we would talk to them about a surgical procedure to help restore the motion to the shoulder and to diminish the pain. One surgical procedure is called a manipulation and basically the patient is um, put on the operating room table, anesthesia is obtained and the shoulder is just forcefully stretched to tear the lining of the shoulder in the different planes of the shoulder. That works well, but it's just not very specific. Sometimes other structures can be torn um, while we're trying to free up the loose lining of the shoulder. Sometimes the shoulder can be um, pushed out of place, and, and it's important for that to be recognized so that can be addressed. I, I would say most shoulder surgeons nowadays don't do the manipulation. They do a more focused treatment where they insert the small camera into the shoulder joint and we can actually see the lining on the inside and we have a small thermal wand that we can actually release and remove the scarred and thickened part of the lining while we're watching the lining to, to get a release so we can restore the motion to the shoulder. That way there's less risk of injuring the other structures inadvertently um, there is a slight risk of, of the injuring an axillary nerve, which is the nerve to the deltoid muscle that comes underneath here. The two options surgically um, have their, their pluses and their minuses. Um, 
more commonly than not, the um, surgical release um, yields as good or better results than the manipulation in a more controlled environment.